We're going to start out on this uh, irritant suspension test 7, and then we're going to jump into this PowerPoint thing on the electronic steering and suspension because that one is a short answer fill in the blank type test. And you know, you know, you know, one of the things that's always struck me about whenever somebody has a when I give a test that's got some true false questions on it that you know you can't go back and redo those because there's only two answers you can get. For some reason or other, people have the idea that the true false questions are not as hard, and if somebody wings it through a true false test, they just about always fail it. You know, is that, it's just bad. Somebody goes winging a true false test, they'll crash and burn on it just about every time. I've seen a lot of tests over the years, and when I say these are, if you do, if somebody's taking an open book test, where all they got to do is go through the book and find the answers, and is there any reason why you should ever fail a test like that? No. No. You shouldn't. But some people will say, well, I don't really want to fool with reading that book. I think I'll just wing it and see if I can get by without that. So they'll get a 60 or a 58 or something like that, you know. Then they go back and get half credit on the ones they fix. Okay. Shared and suspension okay. test 7. Tires act as a part of the vehicle suspension system. True. That's true. And radial tires tend to squirm when the vehicle is driven. False. A lower profile tire has a shorter section height, which results in a more responsive tire that reacts faster during turns. True. True. What's the section height? That's the, uh, from the, the, the tread to the uh, rim. Yeah, that's how tall the tire is when you see it from the rim. If I wanted to know what the circumference of a tire was, and sometimes you need to know that, depending on what you're doing, but how would I tell? What's the quickest way to tell what the circumference of the tire is? How far is it around the tire? Is that 205? No. You can't look at the numbers and, do, and figure that out. It's because pi are square and cornbread are, cornbread are round or whatever. But, uh, but anyway, what you do is you take uh, what I always do if I want to just, you know, you can actually have it on the lift and you can run a tape measure around it if you want to, you know, or you, you could do that, yeah, that would basically be pretty close, but if you just wanted to, you know, if you didn't want to fool with multiplication and all, if you just put a mark on the floor and a mark on the tire and rolled it until that mark was straightened out again and mark it again and measure, you can do it that way. <laughs> You know, a bunch of ways you can do it, but you know, this is Brainiac over here. He's going to do everything with you know higher math and all that. Ah. All right, so okay, uh, the uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know, more people need to do math. Oh, there's another thing I heard about the other day called digital dementia. You know what that is? And it's this serious problem that's been developing in some of the other countries that have like South Korea. If you spend a lot of time on smartphones and computers and all, you're only using one part half of your brain to do that and the other half tends to go to sleep and your memory starts to get bad and you get to where you can't remember things and you can't figure it all that kind of stuff. And that, that's bad news, isn't it? Interesting. That's called digital dementia. It was as an actual uh, condition. Dementia. Yeah, digital dementia from too much time with smartphones, tablets, and computers and all that. Um, uh, you, may, you, may rotate, you may rotate directional tires from front to rear or rear to front, but each tire must remain on the same side of the vehicle. Oh. That is true because they've got, they've actually got, how many of you guys have ever seen somebody put, uh, accidentally put a tractor tire on with the cleats facing the wrong way? You ever seen that? And what does it do? It spins down. It'll spin down. It'll shovel that dirt out there and spin that thing down and get you stuck so fast it won't pull nothing. It doesn't get, you know, you know and that's just nasty. But, I mean, directional tires need to have that arrow pointing back the way the car is going, you know? You know what I'm saying? The arrow, the tread arrows, they need to be pointing forward on the top and backward on the bottom. A tire with a tread wear rating of 300 will probably wear faster than one with a tread wear rating of 400. False. You must tighten the fasteners on any wheel by removing counterclockwise around the wheel from fastener to fastener. Doesn't make sense there, and that's false. Uh, how many of you have ever worked on a vehicle that had left-hand thread on half of the lug nuts? And that was? Bolster trailer. Huh? The military trailer. Military trailer, but also, yeah, the two of you military guys, raise your hand. Old Chryslers had that. Oh, my goodness. Back in the 70s, in and the 60s, late 60s, the early 70s, and and the, the tires on one side of the car had left-hand thread. On one side of the car. Just on one side of the car. How many ever worked on a bicycle? One, the nut on one side's got left-hand thread on the wheel. Remember that? Yep, you do. All right. Tires have implies that run bead to bead parallel to each other with stabilizer belts under the tread are called what? Those are called radials. 
Uh, think about that. The, tire, the blank tire provides better handling and improves high speed, improves high speed stability and fuel economy. The uh, belted bias? Please. That's a radial and you know it. A measurement from the top of a tread to one side of a tire to the top of the tread on the opposite side of the tire is the what? Second height? Please. Width. You guys are making it up. Right. Right. Wheel size. Oh, yeah. He's just deliberately answering questions wrong. If I gave verbal, if I gave verbal check marks, you'd be all covered up. Okay, uh, that was actually going to be the tire diameter. The measurement across the tire's widest point is the what? Tire width. The, the rim width. What? The tire's that's widest tire's point? Widest the tire's, not, that's said nothing about the rim. What is that? Tread width. Have you guys seen these things I've posted on the wall in a couple of places around here? You need to study that until you're breathing it. You know? Section width, okay? That's what I said. All right, 11. That's what I meant. Yeah. She's been around Lundy too long. Okay, 11 is a 245-60R15 tire has a section width of what? 245. You guys are, you guys are really something, you know that? Everybody got that? Does everybody like that answer? Yeah. B, 245 millimeters. Number 12, to balance tires, most technicians prefer to use a what? Uh, a dynamic balancer? What is a dynamic balancer? B. No, actually, it's What's a bubble actually a bubble balancer is a little thing that we used to use at a gas station back when I worked there in the 70s. And it had a, uh, it's got a little thing that you put the tire on and it's got a, a little level bubble in the middle. It's got a circle. And what you do is you put it on there and if it goes off over here you lay weights on on it here, there, and yonder until you get that bubble in the middle and you put those weights on there in that spot. Yeah, it works. You know, it's, it's just a dynamic balancing is better. They also have a road force balancing thing. It actually puts a load on the tire while it's spinning it up and all that stuff. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to swing our camera around. Uh, the vocabulary match? Well, we'll do the vocabulary match too. We can do that. Let's look at the vocabulary match. <laughs> vocabulary match is good. It is our friend. Okay. Before we get into this, vocabulary match. Okay. What is the wheel measurement from the inside bead uh, seat wall to the opposite bead seat wall? Rim diameter. Everybody like that answer? Rim width. Rim width is what that is. The distance from a wheel's mounting surface to the rear edge of the wheel rim. Wheel backspacing. Okay. Now, number 15 is the location of a wheel center line is viewed from the front relative to the location of the mounting face of the wheel hub. That's wheel offset. Now, what is the thing? You know that whenever you're doing your wheel balancing, whenever you bring that little that little uh, thing out of the machine, you touch, that's measuring the offset. That's what it's doing. It's your it wants to know where the offset is in relation to the hub on the machine because those are, those are constants. You know. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, refers to the relationship between a tire's section height and section width. Aspect ratio. Aspect ratio. That is absolutely correct. Give that man a cigar. Okay, number 17 refers to the diameter of the mounting fastener hole pattern in a wheel's center section. That is basically the bolt circle. How do you, what if, I, what if you were going to call somebody up, you had a rim here on the ground in front of you, and you needed to call somebody on the phone, and you needed to get a rim with a bolt circle the right size, how would you do that? How would you give them a measurement they could use to give you a wheel that would fit your vehicle? Five lug or six lug? Yeah. Yeah, that ain't gonna do because they may be different as far as well, where they're based. You basically are gonna on a six lug rim. You're gonna go directly across from holes on opposite side of each other, get in the center of the hole, right? On the five lug rim, you go to the you know any two that are the farthest apart, you know, not two that are next to each other, but two that are farthest apart. And you would refer to that if it was let's say if it was three and five eighths, you would say it was five on three and five eighths. Five lugs, three and five eighths would be your bolt circle. Mm -hmm. The four lug you're going to go right across. Okay. You know, basically just like you would on the other one. The inside of the wheel is important too, though, because that little boss that sticks out when you put it on, if it's a different size, unless it's bigger, it won't work. If it's smaller, you know, maybe if the bolts work, it'll it won't be right. Yeah. Okay, so let's see where are we at here. Which one? I, where was I on? 18. 
Wheel measurement from a point on the inside bead seat to the point on the inside bead seat directly across the diameter of the wheel. That's the rim diameter, rim diameter, and then finally 20 uh, twisting or turning force producing torsion and rotation around an axis. And that one there is C, that's torque. <laughs> second rate amateur, second rate amateur. Okay. That next test we got, steering and suspension test 8, is where we are now. And I have actually connected my clicker to the media projector, which is talking to my computer, which is working better than it did. I had to get another cord to do it, but here we are. Okay, this is your electronic variable orifice system. Now we're going to go over the answers to these when we're done, but be paying attention and answer as many as you can in the midst of this presentation. There are not a whole lot of slides here, but I can turn you into a skeleton if I decide I want to. Okay. All, right. All right, here we go. What do we got here? We got a power steering pump with the actuator. This little rascal here is your power steering pump, and I guess I'll have my laser in my other hand if I want to be a professional pointer. Right there. And basically, you got a diagnostic connector under the dash, which could be somewhere. Why are they showing the diagnostic connector over there? That's the OBD1. No. no it's, it's OBD2. It's on a 94 Thunderbird, and the diagnostic connector was on the right side of the car on a 94 Bird. How many of you guys have worked on it? You may have seen like a 95 Honda Accord. You know where the diagnostic connector is located? Uh, Behind the dead gum ashtray. Yeah. You pull the ashtray out and it's right in the middle, right behind the ashtray. Yeah, right. You never had to do that with a scan tool in the park store, Bobby? Nope. All right, speed sensor on the transmission. Steering sensor. You got a control module back there in the back. Okay. Now, the control module that they're showing back here in the back is in a different place on some cars. Now, when we were working on that Crown Victoria, do you remember where the control module was, Melissa? When we were working on the Crown Victoria, do you remember where the control module was? Yeah, it was in the back. Yeah, it was behind the glove box. Glove box. Oh, yeah. was it? No, oh, was it? Yeah, it was too. Oh, I'm thinking of the freaking OBD1 thing, huh? Probably. The object of the electronic variable orifice system is to adjust the steering or assist for optimized feel. This is accomplished through the use of the electronic variable orifice on the power steering pump. Electronic variable orifice, in other words, if it cuts that fluid flow off, you're not going to have much power for this, right? With the EVO system, steering assist level is determined by looking at vehicle speed and steering wheel rotation speed. So if I'm turning the wheel, it's actually going to make changes because of that. Now we got a scope, and we hooked it up to that wire going out to that uh, actuator, and we were making sure on that car that at various speeds and all it was changing the uh, changing that. Is any, anybody finding one? What's that all about? Want to share that with the rest of us or what? What's up with that? He had, he had to text somebody on the list. Girlfriend? Yeah, it's on my truck. Oh. And I'm trying to figure out why it's running perfect for him. And yet every time I drive it, I feel like I'm about to be on the side of the road with a truck on fire. It doesn't like it because you can drive. No, I can drive pretty good. It's just you the truck. Drive the truck. Okay, so <laughs> the That's the truck. That wasn't even that long. Okay, it was a secret. Wait, let me get them here. No, I can't. Where did you jump to that? All right, before you okay. turn to the Let's go this. Right here we got, we got variable assist power steering systems, MAPS and MAPS 2. All right, you got that? You know what that is? What is this we're looking at here, by the way? What are we looking at? Looks like a rack of pinion. All right, now we got an all out return line. We got a VAPS actuator electrical connector. We got an actuator assembly built up there on, on the rack. We got an all in pressure line. What is this right here? Does anybody know? There's no arrow pointing to it. Lead valve? Nope. Nope. Looks like it's probably where you had it. What was broke on that vehicle? Oh, uh, I got yeah, power steering. Uh, the power steering pressure switch. Pressure switch yeah. <coughs> now that's for the engine controller. Why does the engine controller need to know what the power steering pressure is? Uh, maybe because it needs to keep it stable. It puts a load on the engine when the power steering pump's having a pull, so it's going to have to. Put a little bit of outer air control in there, particularly for time. Now, on a Toyota, they handle that with a doggone vacuum switch. This actually sends vacuum up there to the little actuator. So that vacuum goes through there, and if you see a couple of lines that weren't plugged back into a 
funky looking thing with two nipples on it down there on the steering rack. That darn thing is going to have vacuum leak there because of that reason. Uh, you know, look at that. All right. The variable assist is programmed to change gradually from high assist to low assist as it increases and variations will be perceived as a continuous function by the operator. They won't feel anything. The VAP system will only vary steering assist on vehicle vehicle speed. Steering wheel rotation speed will not affect the VAPS system. Oops. Oops. Is that a question that you see later on? Down there at the bottom, maybe? Steering wheel rotation does not affect this one here. Alright, so here we go. You got it. Now one time when Eddie was going overseas, his wife had a 98 Taurus, like the one that uh, Bobby's working on right now with that fuel tank business. And she took it and they hooked the battery up backwards down at the uh, some place she was getting a battery put on it. And it destroyed the gym module, which took away her variable assist power steering. The gym module is a generic electronic module and it does a lot of stuff. It also destroyed the fuel gauge uh, slush module. And one more thing, I can't remember what it is. I wrote an article about it one time. But uh, anyway, she, the, what, what she felt was that she was not getting any power assist much. It was like it was hard to steer all the time. Now the Crown Vicky, it's got the EVO. Whenever it fails, it's easy all the time. When the Taurus fails, it's hard all the time. <laughs> you see, I mean, so it's different. One's easy all the time when it fails, the other one's hard all the time when it fails. Why do you want it to be a little harder? Because it feels better when you're at road speed. If it's a little more, if it takes a little more effort to steer it loose, like you can fly off the road. Yeah, well, if it's a little tight, yeah. And that's what people talk about over there. Now, this right here is a ZF servotronic system. Now, what, where is the ZF? You ever heard of ZF? That's a company, that's a manufacturer. And they make gears and gearboxes and stuff like that a lot of the time. And that is a German company. Anytime you see anything ZF, this particular system was on the SHO Taurus. It came out in 1989. Here's you got a pump right here. There's your power steering pump. What's this sticking out right here? Somebody tell me. Leader? No, that's not leader. That's where the pulley goes. Yeah, pulley. Okay, right here. What's in this reservoir that most people don't think about? A screen. There's a screen in the bottom of that reservoir, and if that screen gets stopped up. You'll have, a, you'll have a spinning pump that's making noise, you'll have a full reservoir, and you won't have any power steering, and people will say, I don't know what's wrong with my power steering. Willie drove his Ford pickup like that 2002 he had for about a year and destroyed this pump. Then we got another pump, put it on there, and he drove it for a while, and then he decided to put that timing chain in there and all that. You know, and after he got through, he put that pump back on there, just like it was, and it wasn't pumping nothing, so we had to get another pump for it. I don't know how that happened. There's your reservoir. What's this right out of right here? Look at it carefully now. That's a multimeter, right? Huh? Is that a multimeter? No. Every car has a multimeter on it? What's up with that? Uh, yep. Yeah. It's a data link connector. Well, close, <laughs> but it's actually the control module. Okay. So this one right here, what's that? The people that drew this weren't very good at drawing. I would have drawn that a different way. <laughs> that turned out to be the vehicle speed. Wow. Yep. That's it. His text messaging called him out. All right. Electro-hydraulic transducer. Now you're the bottom. All right. Here we go. And you got your steering rack. Duh. Everybody knows the steering rack, right? No. By this time, you can recognize the steering rack. All right. Now, let me ask you one more question. What are these boots for? Dirt are they supposed to keep oil in? No. 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 Shouldn't be any oil in there. If you see water in there, the water's on the wrong part of there. Yeah, keep the water and dirt out there. Good answer. It's got a modified rotary valve that works on direct hydraulic reaction. You'll probably never see one of those. Okay. Vehicle speed signal can be applied in several different ways. It can be hardwired directly from the sensor. That's one way. It can be hardwired from another system, so the speed sensor to the other module, to the control module. You remember that handout that I gave you guys in electrical called Blazing New Trails? Yep. Remember that one? Yeah. Do you remember what was going on there? So on that one, the vehicle speed That's is delivered to the ABS module, and the ABS module 
delivers that to everything else that gets in. It sends it up to the instrument cluster and you know it goes other places from there. But the long and the short of it is the uh, it's not unusual to have other modules I mean, a module, the ABS module being used as a clearing house for vehicle speed. And here's another one from your multiplex network. You can basically have a speed <laughs> sensor talking to another module, and another module is putting it on the network so that every one of these modules knows how fast the vehicle is going. Now, how many different modules can you think of that need to know how fast you're going? Huh? What else besides? One needs to know how fast you're going. ABS does, right? Mm -hmm. Instrument cluster needs to know. And then you know that. What else needs to know? You got other computers on there. Huh? Seatbelt reminder light. That's that's smart. I don't know that answer. Yeah. Uh, Seatbelt reminder light, but it's typically going to get its uh, marching orders from a body computer. It, with the exception of some vehicles, will have a seatbelt uh, reminder module that's under the seat. Some of the little ranger did, yeah. And uh, so basically, uh, it's interesting you should say that because Inani had one that the speedometer would go up to about 30 miles an hour and then drop to zero. And that seat belt reminder module, whenever it got ready to turn on that light, was actually shortening the speed signal away. And it would <laughs> so he had really, it wasn't in any of the books or anything, he had to figure that out hard All right. Now then, steering wheel rotation sensor. It's an optical sensor. What's an optical sensor? Tell me, tell me what an optical sensor is. It reacts to light. It reacts to light, but you've got basically, you know this thing I got right here that I'm always pointing at. Yeah. And so I can take this light right here. See how that one's using it? Just turning on that little green light when I shine light in there. That's an optical sensor. Now, if you've got a light that's shining there all the time, and I happen to have a wheel whirling between those two with slots in it, right? And it's uh, hooked to a shaft that's you know in a particular spot. As it whirls through there and that flashes off and on, instead of turning on the light, it's going to be sending a signal to the computer. Right? And so that's what that little thing's about. And so anyway, that's uh, pretty good for demonstrating what an optical sensor does. Some distributors have got optical sensors in them. Okay. All right. Used to establish the rate of uh, wheel of speed rotation when it senses a wheel being turned quickly, which is a real tight square wave. Uh, evasive maneuvering, the electronic module will command additional power assist. And that's what it looks like right there. It's these little slots. How many of you have seen that? Little, even when you don't have a sensor, a lot of the steering columns have got that slotted wheel on them just by, you know, by default. They got that when you're pulling the steering column off. Everybody in here is supposed to pull the steering column off, have it in your hand so you can show it to me, and then put it back on. You're not supposed to do what one student did. He pulled the steering column off, snuck it home, put it on his truck because it was tilting tilt wheel and he brought his steering column back and put it back on my truck. Wow. And so I called him in and I said, uh, I've got the line sheet on this truck line right here and it says that I have tilt wheel, or at least I used to. So uh, I noticed, I bet if I went out there and checked your truck and the line sheet on it would probably say it didn't have tilt wheel. So I've lost my tilt wheel and you've gained a tilt wheel. So what do you think we should do about that? And he kind of turned red and he goes, I didn't really think you'd catch that. And I said, well, why don't you pull your truck back in here and let's swap them back. Yay. I didn't write up an incident report, I didn't have him fired, I didn't have the police pick him up. I just made him fall the wheels back. He said, well, it's a good thing because your uh, multifunction switch wouldn't work right with my wipers and I would have had to steal that too if I was going to keep that working. Uh -huh. so, that's got kind of funny with it. This is how it's wired up. you got power coming in here, and you basically have to see all the wires right there, that's how they're wired up. you got a ground, you got these two right here that's your rotation rate right input, you got power coming in, so you got power and ground going in there, and then basically it's going to be operating. See, this is actually on both sides of the little wheel, and it's got a, a light, and then it's got a detector for the light on the other side of the switch. And then it turns. Okay, you got an ignition switch signal here. If I can get this thing to listen to what I'm trying to say. There you go. There is the key. Is that the ignition switch? No. That is not the ignition switch. The ignition it's switch is a long way from there. Now, you know, a lot of these GM cars are being recalled because people have got really heavy keys on there and it's turning their car off while they're going down the road. Unintended switch rotation, you know. I mean, it's terrible. And they recalled a bunch more vehicles from 97s all the way up to 14s yeah. this morning. Or, I mean, yesterday. Or something. All right, this one right here. That, you're hot and run. So you can turn that on. That gets hot and run. That feeds the module. It also feeds the sensor. And all that, that's the ignition switch there, way up under the dash. The ignition switch actually moves that by way of the mechanism of the steering column. And uh, 
It's got an off start, an off start run used in some electronic power systems for various operating strategies, and that's to prevent steering mm -hmm. column vibration mm -hmm. from the VAP solenoid during key on engine off. They don't want you feeling the steering wheel going boom, 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 you know. All right. In other electronic power steering systems, the ignition signal will power the control module and steering rotation signal. That's what basically you got there. On some VAP systems equipped vehicles, the actuator will not be powered by the module unless the engine RPM signal is above a certain minimum level, usually 500 RPM, and that's to prevent steering column vibration from the VAP solenoid during the key on engine off. If the steering wheel was jiggling, then you would think your car had some sort of a gremlin in it. You know what I mean? You don't want that. There's your electronic variable orifice actuator valve, your UBO. What's this right down here look like to you? What is that? Anybody know what that is? Look at that in that schematic and tell me what you get there, what you think that is. What does it look like to you? That's the power steering pump. That turn, that's what the pulley's hooked to. It's a pump that's kind of got a little range in it. All right. You got a pressure hose coming out right there. One of your power steering systems. Right. You got a feedback pressure circuit. It's actually a tube, sort of an affair, that's built into it. And this thing right here is not always responsive. Sometimes it gets cocky. Flow control valve, right there. Flow control valve is basically something that you probably, you'll actually see it. If you take the fitting out, if you take the power steering line, lose the pressure line, and you take the fitting out it screws into, there is a little thing about this big under it, it's dancing around in there that you can pull out with a magnet and it's got a spring behind it. That's your flow control valve, in case you're wondering. And I've had to replace those occasionally. You don't, you probably won't ever, most of the time you're going to just put uh, a pump on it, you know. Mm -hmm. And don't be surprised if you actually have a vehicle that you work on that has no power steering in spite of the fact that it's full of fluid, there's no stopped up screen, and the pump's spinning and not making any noise. It's just like the pump's just dead in the water. And then it could be a flow control valve problem, whatever it is. Way or another. You got an orifice right here, and then you got an actuator assembly. One of these X's right here. One of those X's there. Huh? No, no, no. Do those, do those compress? We talked about that the other day on a different, on a transmission thing. That's windings. When you see that in a, in a drawing like this, those are electric windings. Look at that connector. See the connector going to those windings right there? And then you got a pencil. That's this part right here in the middle. It's basically, as it moves back and forth, it's going to change the orifice size. That ain't complicated. It's controlled by the electronic steering control module. It regulates the power steering from the power steering pump. If that orifice moves, you're going to get more or less flow, you see. It's not complicated there. Really, the EVO actuator valve is current control. What does that mean? How am I going to control it? How much steering is going through it? With volts, amps, or ohms. Am I using volts, amps, or ohms? What's What's this? What are you saying? Am I using volts, amps, or ohms? Or amps. Amps, because amps is current, right? I was shaking my head after you said ohms. Second rate imager. Okay. Current control solenoid that moves the needle valve to increase or decrease the size of the orifice. The solenoid allows full fluid flow in the de-energized position. That's the EVO, that's the Crown Victoria, that's the one that's got easy steering all the time. If this winding burns out, if that winding burns out, you can't that buying that solenoid costs more than the doggone rebuilt pump. But that's the most common thing you're going to find on those Crown Vickies. If you take the winding on that solenoid, do you remember what it's supposed to have? Here, I can't remember, but it's like 12 ohms or something, and it was wide open on that Crown Vicky, and I put a power steering pump on it. Right. In the event of an electrical circuit malfunction, this is the circuit open. The EVO provides maximum power assist. Not too hard. Right here. Variable assist power steering actuator valves, VAPS and VAPS 2. This is a slightly different system, but it's got the same basic function. What is this again? Switch. Pressure switch. What's that? Got electrical connector going to it. What, it what would you call that? Think quick. This is a verbal exam. It's pass or fail right now. You'll be swapping the deck. Well, the movie out of the nuclear program if you can't answer that. I think I'll start giving board exams in here. I'm going to have each person stand up there and answer questions, answer hard questions from all the rest of us. So that'd be good with it. Can we start with you, Quincy? Can we be good? Okay. 
or valve system, the actuator assembly is an electronic stepper motor. It varies the position of the spool. What's the difference between a current control solenoid and a stepper motor? Stepper just goes and jumps. Well, a stepper actually moves a little at the time. Yeah, it's got currents always coming through, moving, and stepper. Is it's got one power through. feed and several grounds, and each time the grounds walk, and it's got a little screw that turns around. It's kind of like these uh, idle air controls on these Chevy pickups and Dodges and all. And if you have to watch that, it's walking those grounds, and the little thing will just come out, and it'll come back in. And it can stop it anywhere it wants to. That's why they call it a stepper motor. I mean, current control means that the more current the engine controller puts on it, or the body computer, or whatever is operating this, it's going to push it against a spring. The more current you got, the more it goes against. So there's a couple of different ways to do that. And so it changes the amount of fluid flow. But it's all, they're all doing the same problem. It's, what is this right here? Module. Module. The modules are good. They're our friends, right? Okay. Depending on the vehicle and system used, the control module will either be a standalone or integrated with other systems. Although the module may be standalone or integrated, the strategy remains the same. I got the same program tapped into the little brain. Uh, now the difference is will be how it's diagnosed and what test equipment will be used. All right, you got that. It's got a microprocessor that analyzes inputs, monitors them, and loses the information to control the actuator assembly. So see, it's just got a few inputs and it's got basically one output, other than your, you know, scans and stuff. So that ain't really big. <coughs> Typical wrap system, you got a pump, you got pressurized fluid, you got an actuator, and then you got all this information right here that really is basically repeating the same thing. This is the dead horse beating thing. And okay. Can you go back to that one for just yeah. the underlying? Yeah. Which one? The underlying stuff? Yeah. Let's see if I can back up. Let's see if I can go back to a go no, back, go back, go back. All right. We'll just do it the easy way. How about that? That one? Yes, sir. If the system failed, the actuator will stay in the position it was when the system failed. That is an important question. I should have left that up there longer. Uh, stand convicted. Okay, let's go over it right quick. Let's look at start with question number one. Electronically controlled steering systems provide the driver with increased steering assist at what speed? Roads. Yeah, at road speed. Okay. With an EVO steering system, steering assist level is determined by looking at what and what? Vehicle speed and the steering road rotation. Very good answer, y'all. Yeah. The VAP system will only vary steering assist based on what? There's one of these new two inputs you just mentioned vehicle that it does not speed. look at. Huh? Vehicle speed. Vehicle speed. Listen to that guy. He's just really a short cut. Well, was on after and number two. Huh? The second one. Number two, what now? Steering level rotation. Okay. The EVO system is steering level assist is determined by looking at, yeah, steering level rotation and vehicle speed. What are the three ways the electronic power steering control module can receive the vehicle speed signal? Hardwired to sensor. Yeah, I can either get it from directly hardwired or another module or off the network. And number five, blank, the blank is controlled by the electronic power steering control module. It regulates the power steering fluid flow from the power steering pump and an EVO steering system. EVO actuator valve. Say it louder. Right? EVO actuator valve. Actuator valve? That sounds like a good idea. You like it, and that's the. Have you, do you know how that works? It's got a winding in there. Remember that? Is that the one that has a pencil, or does it have a current control or something? EVO or VAPS? What do you think? That's the pencil. That's it. I jerked them around. They don't remember. Okay, you're right. EVO. Okay, if there's an electrical malfunction in the EVO steering system, the EVO provides how much is what kind of assist? By shutting off power to the actuator. If you lose power to the actuator, what kind of assist do you get? Maximum, Maximum assist. If the actuator assembly is de-energized in the VAPS steering system, the system provides what? VAPS 2, excuse me. What kind of assist? Minimum assist. That's like that uh, one I was talking about. The major components of the EVO system are the what? What do you got there, y'all? Speed sensor, steering sensor, control module, power steering pump, actuator, and data link connector. Yeah, you're doing good on that. And we have studied the way of that. Yay! Good girl. Thank you.
Okay, the major components of the EVO system, we already have the, if the, if the system fails on a VAP system, the actuator will do what? It'll just stay right where it was. Oh, that's very good, y'all.